Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Oh, I didn't hear a response. Uncle Frank, I was going to ask you to order some banku for everybody. That will give them some strength to say uh, good morning to me also. We are gathered here together to commemorate the one-week celebration of our sister, wife, friend, colleague, team player, and member of our church, Auntie Hager Nanabima Taki, whom the Lord chose to call home to rest far away from us, but so close to our hearts. So we continue our service as we all rise to sing the Methodist hymn 10 and ancient and modern 499. Now thank we all our God. We shall sing all the stanzas. understand everything you do we do not agree with everything the way you do them and sometimes we want to give you advice but none of these matter the important thing is that you do what you want to do when you want to do it how you want to do it where you want to do it and you do not ask for any counsel from any man that is why we submit to your leadership this morning. We submit to your lordship in this program. We submit to the things you have done in the lives of the Taki family and the Bemaf and the Menu family. We ask that your grace will abound. 
your hand will be with us in the service. Let words of comfort register where they have to. The word of advice go to where it has to be. And when it is all said and done, it will be for your glory. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. I will grant you to sit or we'll grant ourselves to sit as we continue our service and sing when peace like a river this refrain says it is well with my soul may it be well with our souls as we sing when peace like a river Soul is a 
Our first scripture reading can be found in the Psalm of David, Psalm 39, reading from the first verse through to the last verse. Psalm 39, verse 1 to 13. Let's hear the word of God. I said, I'll watch my ways and keep my tongue from sin. I'll put a muzzle on my mouth while in the presence of the wicked. So I remain utterly silent, not even saying anything good. But my anguish increased. My heart grew hot within me. While I meditated, the fire burned. Then I spoke with my tongue. Show me, Lord, my life's end and the number of my days. Let me know how fleeting my life is. You have made my days a mere hand breath, and the span of my years is as nothing before you. Everyone is but a breath, even those who seem secure. Surely, everyone goes around like a mere phantom. In vain, they rush about heaping up wealth without knowing whose it will finally be. But now, Lord, what do I look for? My hope is in you. Save me from all my transgressions. Do not make me the scorn of fools. I was silent. I will not open my mouth. For you are the one who has done this. Remove your sketch from me. I am overcome by the blow of your hand. When you rebuke and discipline anyone for their sin, you consume their wealth like a moth. Surely, everyone is but a breath. Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for help. Do not be deaf to my weeping. I dwell with you as a foreigner, a stranger, as all my ancestors were. Look away from me that I may enjoy life again before I depart and I'm no more. The word of God. Our second reading is taken from the book of Romans, chapter 8, reading from verse 31 through to 39. Romans 8, 31 to 39. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword. As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all th these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God 
that is in Christ Jesus our Lord, the word of God. Thank you very much. We prepare our hearts to receive an encouragement, an exhortation from the Lord. We shall sing Methodist hymn 615, 615. When guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. We shall stand and sing. says brief I really hope it is brief because as for us our brief is like two hours <laughs> I'm sure those of you who go to church you are very familiar with it you say oh, just a little it's 30 minutes so I hope to share briefly with you um, the last reading in the book of Romans chapter 8, left us, and particularly me, with some questions. I believe many of us have heard that passage, that neither death, nor height, nor distress, pain, and everything is able to separate us from the love of God. We have heard that before. So I ask myself, I have been close to the Lord for the last 42, 43 years. Do I believe it? When I see 
close, been born again for that long, do I believe it? Do I believe that he loves me enough so that when I am bereaved or when things happen to me, I would say thank you and move on? It's a question that I wish all of us, especially those of us of faith, will answer. Because a little biology I did tells me that we begin to die the day we are born. The day you are born, the body begins to take through certain processes. You are growing. You are walking, you are talking, you are doing different things. And every one of them leads you to old age. And old age results in the terminal. And so every, whatever it is, whether it's a young gone too soon or gone too early, the value is the same. It is a one week service and I'll try to create a bit of laughter because that's what we need. My friend Frank, he has cried. He says that he, we came to visit him and they said, let somebody sleep with you. So if you don't, she can't visit. So I'd like to have a seat with her and talk to her. Why he didn't add is whether he can serve her tea. If the ghost came to visit him. But that is another thing to, visit, to talk about. So, is it possible for us to take God at his way? His daughter went through a very difficult time towards the last few months, years of her life. Those of us who interacted would say, no, that she did fight. She did fight the fight of faith. She prayed, she hoped, she confessed the word of God. She did everything. But finally, the one who does what he wants to do when he wants to do it has taken him, her home. As every one of us will go home. I have a piece of scripture that I want to add to make the point that we... Um, just came across. That can be found in Luke 16, 24 to 31. I would summarize it and hope that you believe that I won't lead you astray. I was watching um, a Madia film the other day and there was a quote in the film and then Madia said, oh, don't you know how, no, how Jonah went into the, went into the plane and the Lord put her on an island. And it, Jonah never went into a plane for anything. She didn't know the scriptures. And she, but she was so. The young girl who didn't know that it was wrong. Went to tell her auntie. That my dear, oh, how God took Jonah and put her on the plane. And auntie said, where did you get that one from? He said, my dear told me. So just trust that I will share with you what is there in the scripture. In Luke 16, 24 to 31, we find an interesting story. It's a parable. And um, the, always the debate among theologians is whether parables should be taken um, at face value or just take the story or take the lessons there. I believe we take the lessons from the parable. And it's the story between, of Abraham and Lazarus as they went to God. Paradise, heaven, and this parable was shared by Jesus. Now, the rich man apparently was suffering. And he asked Abraham to send the young man he has always been sending, even in heaven. The parable will tell you that when we go to heaven, we will not be able to operate and dominate the people we are dominating on earth again. So he couldn't be sent. But what was important to me in the story is that he said that okay, I'm suffering here. 
So send again. First he said, send Lazarus to bring me water. When that was refused, he said, then send Lazarus to go again on earth. Permanent messenger. And go and tell my relatives that, hey, this death business and God, it's very serious. That is in Luke um, 16, 24 to 31. It's very serious. So please, let them take it serious. And let them live their lives the way it ought to be. That lesson should be taken serious. Because it is Jesus who gave that parable. So Jesus is saying that whether you are big, small. Whether you believe it, you do not believe it. Whether you have any issue, it doesn't matter. One day, we will each stand before God's judgment seat. And what is determined there will be beyond our power or our limits. So let everyone who is here, who is here, listen. And I am bold. My, I'm titling this message, My Confidence. I'm bold because during the last years of Hagar's life, we talked about faith. We talked about prayer. And she was so confident of where she would be. Yet, she didn't want to go because of those she was leaving behind. And she was also confident because she wanted to have an opportunity to have to testify of the goodness of God to others. Those who talked to her would have realized that it was always in a conversation. She said, I have testified once and I've shared to people how good God is. God grant me life that I will do it again. That was confidence. I wish that all of us will have that confidence in Christ. And all of us would want to share to others his goodness. Now, coming back to Jesus' words, he says that Lazarus is not going to come back. But they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. And then I said, ah, but you, Abraham, Moses came after you. So why should they not listen to you, but they should listen to Moses? I found an answer. Moses organized all the thoughts of Abraham into a written form. The law, the Torah, which is the basis of the word of God that we read. Basis because we have added on to it We've got the Old Testament. We've got the New Testament. And the instructions that are there are supposed to be the things that must guide us. God's love is there. It doesn't separate. We, are, we cannot be separated from his love. He will always love us. But the word is there to tell us. And we will need to believe it. Because that is what Moses and the prophet stood for. Now, it is interesting that when Jesus came into the earth, on, onto the earth, he was God and he is still God. He came as God in the flesh. He walked by the rules and the words that Moses spoke. So that when you go to Matthew 23, 21 to 4. He told the people of Jerusalem. Listen to what the scribes and the Pharisees are teaching you. Because they sit in the seat of Moses. They sit there and they teach. And because they present the things that Moses has set out. Which is the word of God. Listen to them. Jesus had an issue with them though. He said that some of them had made the word of God so difficult to understand, so difficult to follow, and they were leading people astray. He said, do not do what they do, but listen to what they say. So the word can be distinguished 
from the actions of the priests, from the pastors, and those around. We are in a critical place in our country where many of us are lost. We have pastors who say all manner of things. Turn on to the radio and they say, Ah, we hear a sermon, we hear a You don't need a way. You don't need to listen to Moses. You need direction. What is direction? Bram 500 cities. And you are a quanchier. And patch of a quanchier. And you are a The direction is in the word of God. Let every one of us who is here make it a habit to read through the scriptures. To pray that God will help us. And to discuss with people who can help us understand the scriptures. It is the basis for listening to the word and to listening to Moses. I am confident in so doing because the one we have come to see of was like that. She took the word very seriously. And even though the instruction is that we should not the people will not say and do what is right. Don't look at me if I come chasing your wife and say, Osofo too does it. So me too, I can do it. Don't look at me if you gave offerings and when they were counted, and this is a true story, happened in our church. Somebody gave offerings and that person is an elder in the church. So, he knew he put 50 CDs in the offering bowl. This was in the 90s. When the offering was tallied and he saw the figures, you know, they tallied the offering, 50 notes, two, they tallied the figures and they realized that there was no 50 CD in the offering. So he went back. Me, myself, and I we put 50 CDs in the offering. So why is there no 50 CD in the offering by the reckoning? Ultimately, we caught a young lady. She comes to trade on Sunday morning during offering time. Whatever she's doing, when it's time to count, she'll come and count. So that she would manage to harvest something home. And of course, she's not taking, those days, red notes were very important. He wouldn't take the red. He likes the brown. Because one pick is very good. If that is what I do, do not follow me. Follow what the word of God says. And that is very important. Every one of us inside, we know what is right. Let us live by what is right. Let us not follow just what other people do. One thing that I want to share in this brief word is that in 2 Peter chapter 3, 1 to 4, we learn that God says he's coming back. But even the disciples, even Peter had a problem. Peter lived, he wrote his gospel around 63 AD. 63 AD. And he wrote and said, ah, God said he will come. We have been waiting for him. He has not yet come. Then he explained and said, 33 years after the death of Jesus, I'm sharing this with you because God is not slow in his coming, but it is because he wants to give those of us who listen to Moses an opportunity to change. I heard last week at a funeral. Say yes, all background or high truck and can cancer to say be a do. That is if Jesus took the push track from heaven, since he promised he was coming, and he was sitting on the push track and the small boys were dragging him. By this time he'll be here. So definitely he's he, as Americans will say, he ain't coming back. Because he had not read Peter to say 
that all that we do, God is being patient with us. We can do philosophy. We can do whatever. It is patience. But the day will come when there will be no patience for you. Patience for you. And nobody knows that day. That is why you and I must prepare. Not because I said it, but because it is good for you. And because it is necessary. And because it is important. Our sister has gone to be with the Lord. Our mother has gone to be with the Lord. Our wife has gone to be with the Lord. And um, I have had a problem as a pastor when we say somebody has gone to be with the Lord. Please, fact. Everybody doesn't go to be with the Lord. It's a fact. Everybody doesn't go. Some of us get missing. But the choice of whether you get missing or you stay depends on you. A story is told, and it's a true one, of a boy who was sitting in a service at La. And there's an old man who stays in that area. The old man had passed. And they were reading his tributes. So the people came and they read nice tributes. The man is good. He's that. He's this. He's that. The microphone was open where the boy was sitting. So after a while, the boy some some something. Amale. For those of you who eat gan kinky, but you don't speak the language, it means that clap your hands. <laughs> I will help you. What the boy said is that they are lying. So whether we are good or we are bad, even the people we live with can testify. So, if the boy was the one who was marking, obviously, all the things that people were saying didn't matter. For as long as this man was mean and evil to him, he is lost. Please don't be lost. Please find Jesus. Please give your life to Jesus. And why am I so confident? I'm confident because Nana was confident. Revelation 7. Revelation 21. We learn that ultimately death will be conquered. We learn that our tears will end. We learn that we will not need to buy petrol at 12 cities. Those of us who buy petrol, we know when we go some of us do not, but some of us when we go say, so, at the end of the day, it means that my money will get less. I am not doing politics. It is just a fact of life. In the beginning of this year, I read, I listened to a Zambian prophetess. And she said, this year, it was at a time when everybody was saying the year will be good. And she said, this year, nations will be shaken. Economies will crash. And things will be difficult. Little did I know that my good friend Putin will start a spiral thing that would make the Europeans cry ajay. A long time ago, there was a, there's a mutual friend of I, Auntie Gladys and I, uh, it's called Mr. Sarkozy. I was in his office. And the economy had become like this in the late 90s. Those of us who know, in the 90s leading to 99, 2000, the city was running. It was depreciating petrol. Everything kept running up just like this. So I went to his office and we're talking. And he said, Oh, at the end of the day, send your corner. But by the time I back on, no, no, check. Because you will scan anti omo omo eni scan omo bra answer na be kan na ache. He was saying that here yeah, I have money, and so by the time the thing would touch me, it will be it it will be a, a long time. But 
Whether it's going to be a long time or not, nobody has and nobody can say that we have it all together. Life is uncertain. So in, on this earth, we have trouble. Even if you take the political thing out of it, some of us have been sentenced to take five, six medications every night or every morning so that our frames can look like they are looking. The elderly ones know what I'm talking about. So when you are traveling, the first thing your wife was, half a way through now, have you taken your medicine? When you are young, it's so good. You can't feel what it is. But you can identify with me. And then there are young people. They say these days, Yabudidi. So Yabudidi means that you have to cut small and then go and eat. So they are drinking all kinds of concoctions. Their kidneys and liver are failing because that is the work of the liver to take away concoctions out of our lives. So in our own lives, we see husband against wife, father against mother, and all the things that we see. Long ago, the Bible prophesied it, that in the last days, men will be lovers of themselves. Men will do will not want the truth. They will want to have, they will have itching ears and they will want to have anything else apart from what the word of God says. Go to social media. It is there. Slay queens set the agenda and others follow. So even though you are married and you are good, you want to be like a slave queen because if you don't slay, your husband will go away. So we are following the agenda that people who do not have faith are setting. The anchor is in Jesus. Listen to Moses and the prophets. That is the word of God. And be convinced that nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. Whatever happens, Christ will love you. Christ will walk with you. He will care for you. Even if you do not see him, you do not hear him, he will care for you. It is on this note that I will say to my brother Frank, I'll say to his family, I'll say to Nanette's family, I'll say to friends, I'll say to loved ones, be encouraged and be comforted. If the story of Nana is told, the last small boy will not say Amale because we will tell the truth. The truth is one of faith. The truth is one of somebody who loves the Lord. The truth is one who found Jesus and lived for Jesus. Let that be your truth. Let that be your courage. And let us take heart because our wife is not lost. Our daughter is with the Lord. You know, I told you those at the car park. He said to me, it is Frank and the children I think about. She said so. If I go on my phone, I can show you messages. It is Frank and the children I think about. So those of us who are crying, she was not thinking about how she would lose out. She was thinking about what will happen to you after him. And that is why Jesus said to the Jerusalem ladies, he said, daughters of Jerusalem, do not cry. Care for yourselves. My, the best I can do this morning is to give anybody who is here who has not found Jesus an opportunity. Please, it is not me frightening you to go to heaven. Second, I'm not asking him to come to my church. So it is not me trying to take your offering or take your money. It is me saying that Nana stood for Christ. I stand for Christ. Listen to Moses and the prophets. It is true. Take heart. But you can only take heart completely if you are not going to be lost like her. Shall we bow down our heads in prayer?
I want to ask you in the privacy of your heart. I'll be around a bit before I go. You can talk to me. If you don't want to talk to me, talk to somebody who is knowledgeable. But ask Jesus. Tell Jesus you know you are a sinner. Tell Jesus I'm not sure where I'll go or I know where I'm going but definitely not with you. Forgive me my sins. Come into my heart. I want to die and be sure that I'm coming to where you are. I want to be confident. I want to be so confident like Nana was confident. I want to be able to say, God, I'm going, but it is my family and my friends that I care about. As the two of us, it is settled. Can you talk to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, I know I have not lived right completely. I have sinned. Forgive me my sin and come into my heart. Today, I take you as my Lord and Savior and be with me to the day I die. That when I die, I'll come to you. I pray for you that God's grace would always envelope you. I pray for you that you will know the value of the truth. I pray for you that you're not listening to things that you are not listening to but to come to the place of truth. I pray for you that you will not say that, oh, too much of God is not good. No, there's nothing too much, there's nothing bad with too much of a good thing and God is good. I pray for you that your families and your homes, your businesses, where you belong and the things that pertain to you will be great. I pray for you that you will see God in this day, that whatever challenge it is or it is not, the goodness of God will minister to you. In the name of Christ, the living God, I pray. Amen. Thank you very much, Reverend Dr. John Isubonting of Living Streams Church. We will take an offering at this time and um, the choir will lead us and then the baskets so will also be passed around.
Gracious and loving Heavenly Father. A gathering is not one of joy, but being in your presence alone gives us great joy. And out of what you have given us, we have given just a little bit of what you have given us as substance. A prayer, O oh Lord our God, is that you will accept us because we offer ourselves as living sacrifices to you. Accept us. Sanctify us. And bless this offering that we give from hearts that are filled with gratitude to you for who you are and how you have revealed yourself to us through Christ Jesus. Bless this offering, O oh Lord our God, even as you bless us also. We give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So now I'll be praying for the family. Yabo Shirayen Yabo Wasenya Nasi Enkwana Sumji Jesus, Father, we thank you. You created us as community because that's who you are. Father, who is Son and Holy Spirit. We want to thank you for the family of Hagar Nanabimataki. We want to thank you for Frank and the children. And the family around Frank. And we want to thank you for the Mainu family that is so joined with the Taki family. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for the joys that they shared with Nanabema. We thank you for the times that they cried, the times that they sought your face and you answered them. We stand on the wishes of Nana Bema and we ask that you encapsulate Frank and the children in your love. Let them experience how extravagant, how lavish your love is. And let them know as a fact that nothing will separate them from you, our loving God, because of Christ Jesus. And we say the same prayer for the Menus. They've lost a gem. But Lord, they haven't lost. She's away, but in our hearts. We thank you for her life of example and the way she has led for us to walk through. And we pray that indeed, every day of remembrance of her will cause us to raise our eyes up to you, O Lord our God, who have revealed yourself to us through Christ Jesus. Strength is what we ask for them. 
courage is what we ask for them. Love for you, O living God, is what we pray and ask for them. And we pray, O God, that through this grieving, they will show the rest of us that in Christ, all tears will be wiped away. As we prepare to inter the mortal remains of your daughter, Higan Anabe Mataki, help us to focus on Christ Jesus, who still beckons us to give our lives to him. And may we, through this period, and because of Hagar's example, make a decision to lay our all before the throne and accept Jesus as Savior and Lord. We thank you, O Lord, our God, for other families. Some even here are also grieving. And we pray that you touch their hearts as well. And for us, the family of God, we pray for strength. We pray for boldness. We pray for courage. We pray for love. We pray for patience. And we pray for faithfulness. We pray all these through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Let's invite the family to give us some notices. One week celebrations are times when the family tells us how we are going to dispatch our dear one. So let's have a representative of the family come and update us what's going to happen henceforth. And any other announcements that they have, we will take them also. Thank you very much. Before I say anything, I would like you to put your hands together for us to praise God for the life of my dear sister. That clap offering, I believe, was for ourselves. Let us thank God with a loud clap offering. Let us keep clapping. Let us keep clapping. Let us keep clapping. Thank you very much. My sister's life was indeed a testimony of the grace of God. I'd like to thank God for this beautiful weather this Tuesday morning. And I'd also like to thank all the priests who are here to join us and lead this Requiem Mass. Thank you very much. Thank you, my sister. I'd also like to thank family, friends, colleagues, loved ones who were able to join us here this morning. We anticipated that just about a hundred of you are going to be here, but this is a show of love and we thank you very much for making time <laughs> of your busy schedules on a Tuesday morning to join us here to observe this memorial before the burial service and the funeral rites. The family of my dear sister's husband, our own family, for my Jesu Bissiasi, the Joe Menu family, the Lomote family of Usu Kinkawe, and the Johnson's family from Sierra Leone. We are also grateful 
that you were able to join us. Family met on Sunday and we have decided that we we're going to have a beautiful burial service for my dear sister on the 15th of October. Next month, 15th of October, is a Saturday. And the Accra Rig Church, I believe, um, would be officiating the service. All other arrangements, the final funeral rites and so on, will be announced when we officially um, get to the media. And then at the end of the burial service, we'll also announce where we're going to have the final funeral rites. Obviously, the following day, which is a Sunday, we're going to have the Thanksgiving service. And after that, we're also going to have a reception. God willing. God willing. God willing. So, I would like the choir to sing one more song whilst we prepare to leave. Do you have the benediction? Okay. So, after the benediction, we do have a family favorite that we sing. That's my daddy's only song that I heard him sing. And um, I believe you know that song. So after the benediction, we are going to sing that song, you all join us. And once again, I would like to thank you, thank you so much for joining us to make this day really a memorable one. Thank you very much. Oh, if you are clapping, clap. Whether we live, we live for the Lord. Whether we die, we die for the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. I do not care where death picks me up. Death is a certainty. And if you are here this morning and you are afraid of death, May the grace of God come to you. Amen. Hello? Amen. David said, the thing that I feared most has come to me. Don't, don't fear death to the extent that when you hear about it, you stagger. It is a joyful thing to be with the Lord. Amen? Amen. It is a joyful thing to be with the Lord. Begin here. If you don't begin to have fellowship with God here on earth, then of course you, you have every right to fear. Because if you fall into the hands of the God who says <laughs> it's a fearful thing, the, 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 the writer to the Hebrews said it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. If you, if you fall foul of God's free love that he has given to you. We are here, my brothers and sisters. We are here because of love. And I want to stress and stress and stress. We are here on earth. The whole universe has been put in place by a designer called G.O.D. He controls everything. The scientists are beginning to shift focus and they are, they are gravitating towards the fact that the earth, the whole universe has a designer. Hallelujah. Amen. You see, when you see some in white and some in black, then you'll be asking what God is a God of variety. Amen. Amen. You, should, you should be grateful that uh, you, you are seeing this variety. 
very soon I will be in my black. I have black under it. Amen? Amen. As you sit here now, just the fact that you are breathing, you are enjoying this fine breeze. Turn to the next person and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To the other side, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In everything, you should give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Concerning you and me, uh, if only you are a believer in Christ. Amen? Amen? And I want to believe that if not all of us, some of us, most of us, are believers in Christ. Amen? A believer in Christ shouldn't be afraid. Do you know how many fear not we have in the Bible? Yeah? 365 and some places 366 sometimes depending upon the translation what is God telling you and me how many fear not once a day that means every day God renews his mercy towards you and me every day and we should be grateful amen all right so now let us let us all bow our heads some of you, if you are tired of, uh, if you are tired of sitting, you can stand. But let us all uh, stand or sit, as it were, and let us receive the benediction of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit each one of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, be upon you. All yours, your homeward journey from here, tomorrow day after tomorrow, and after everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Um, the song is Praise to the holiest in the eyes. But before we sing, um, if you can spend some few minutes, hours with us here, please continue on to, to be with us. Uh, we'll be receiving visitors until 6 p.m. And um, those of you who brought some donation to our sister family, um, see our sister off in a grand style, please, I uh, would we'll have a donation table and we would appreciate your donations. It is right here. It's hidden, please, let it, let it be here. The donation table will be here. And we also have... Uh, Book of condolence. Um, if you want to write something to cheer us up, please don't forget to do that before you leave. Qua, are you ready? Can we all stand and sing this song? Thank you.
thank you for coming. Like I said, we don't want you to leave us. Please stay with us so that we can enjoy your company. Thank you very much.
Bessere Bibri, Yadia Sorino, Abba Avia, Tia Bessi Samu Kakra, Sadia Moa Monomono, Tia Bessi Bibri, a far a tossum, you know, Yabesre Oheha, Yadi, a year, Boxono, Ewaha, Ebiana, Udin Su, Ebaye, Anase Minras. Yeah, and sa ninginano, ye bit me, I hear a ha, ne yadi hujuma, awa ha. Tell the minras eba ya anase in su anase said ye bribiano oko na what ya see a we don't know. Sa pepe and ye ye mama edi tia besse bibri. Bibri ena omodu omodi abaha ama in sabri uh temri pomono dominadi ebe to ja na yeti me ahe ripomono. Yadaw masi fefe fe ti ye besre udi nsuo ba ya ye water no ubi timi di abaha ana drinks ena ade ba ya enonso ubi timi edi abaha ama ye sabri na ye timi ahwe na ye di atuja ye dit ye di be yi ye mame ye di betuja na ubi ye timi asene nson na brene swa ye gina ye timi abba abidiso na ye fefe fe to Sabri, Opeser, Obetia, a year, family one, or more at Nasse, Obetime, Abetium of a fair fair, Na yet your door, a bottom of a fair fair, Na yet to me, a call your name. Sabri, over your hands, so I walk it, Ewaha, and your war, a Sante, a mamere from Tom from Enso, Ewaha, and your war, a year, Yenian more, a quaff for us, or more so a year or more, a dear fair fair, and so I have a better than a cracker, a cousin, we don't know a bedjo. Midindi Oboba uh Sabri Yebehe Na Yatuaso Ewaha Amano Aya Kama to hear Kitty Fonanso Aya Wan and T Messe Semobum you know na Makiti Fonanso Abokakra Amaye Medas. Thank you. 